Hey there! In this lesson we're going to talk about how to use for loops, which is really just a shortcut way of taking certain kinds of while loops and writing them a little bit easier. So we're going to talk about the syntax of using for loops, we're going to compare them with while loops and see when we should use each kind of loop, and then lastly we're going to talk about some do's and don'ts for using for loops effectively. Just to review, this whole unit is about looping. Remember that looping means taking a section of our program and repeating it one or more times. <clears throat> and we use Boolean expressions, just like with conditional statements in loops, we use Boolean expressions to decide whether the loop should keep running. As long as the Boolean condition for our loop is true, the loop keeps running. Now what's a for loop? A for loop is uh, just a way of taking a certain kind of while loop and writing it a little bit more compactly. So you will notice that you start writing a lot of these kinds of while loops where you create a variable, in this case called count, you give it a value, you test its value inside your while loop, and then at the end of your while loop you change its value in some way. In this case, count starts off as 1, we check to see if it's less than or equal to 10, and we add 1. So that, and that creates a program that prints out 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 10. Now what we're going to do in our for loop is we're just going to take the three parts of that um, and put them together in one line. So the first part is we initialize the variable, then we test its value, and then we mutate it. It's important to understand that those three parts still take place at exactly the same times as they would in our while loop. In other words, the initialization takes place before the loop runs, the test takes place at the beginning of each run through the loop, and the count plus plus there takes place at the end of each time through the loop. And in case we haven't talked about this before, count plus plus is just a short way of writing count gets count plus one. So remember, every for loop has an equivalent while loop. And similarly, you can take any while loop and you can write it as a for loop, just that there are some cases when you really wouldn't want to. So let's talk about that. Comparing the two kinds of loops, again, um, the big difference is uh, that for loops should only be used for a definite amount of looping. That means that um, when it's time to run the for loop, you should be able to quantify at that point the exact number of times that the loop is supposed to run. It doesn't mean it has to be a number that you know when you're writing your program. You can use a variable um, to define that number of times, but it should be that variable should have a value that's well defined by the time the loop runs. What you don't want to have is a loop that runs an indeterminate number of times. Like for example, um, type in a bunch of numbers until you're finished and then type in negative one. That would be a case where you can't use a for loop because you don't know ahead of time how many times that the user's going to type in numbers. You have to use a while loop for that. Um, just a minute. Um, similarly, uh, you need to make sure that the loop runs as many times as it's supposed to if you're using a for loop. Um, if you have a loop that may run uh, stop in the middle, um, then that needs to be a while loop. Let's talk about some more tips for using while, uh, for loops effectively. You should use a real name for your counter variable, especially if you think that um, you may need to use it inside of your loop. The only time, some people write for loops that have counter variables like i, j, k, but the only time you should ever do that is if all that loop counter variable is supposed to do is count. If you're going to use it inside the loop, you need to give it a name, and the name has to be a meaningful name. Also, don't cut corners when you're writing your for loop. You need to put something in each one of those three parts where you initialize, check, and then change the counter variable. If you find that you're not needing to write code for one of those three parts, then that's a good clue that you should have written a while loop instead. Um, and again, predictability is what we should be going for here. You should be modifying the counter variable in a consistent way each time at the end of each run through your for loop. If you are doing different things to it each time, then again, it's not really a good candidate for a for loop. Some things that you shouldn't do. Don't modify any other variables inside of the third part of your for loop. Technically it's possible, it's syntactically correct, but it's a really bad style. People only expect that you're going to modify the counter variable. Also, if you're going to use the counter variable after the loop quits, then you need to declare it above the loop. You can give it a value in the for loop, but you need to declare it before the loop runs. And lastly, we've talked about this before, don't put anything in your for loop that's going to make it quit unexpectedly. 
Um, again, the whole kind of central idea behind a for loop is that it runs a definite number of times, and you don't want to do anything to short circuit that. So let's take a look at an example. Here we're going back to a program from a long time ago from our debugging lab where we were looking at the um, bottles of beer program. So <clears throat> here we've got all the uh, makings of a classic for loop. We've got a statement that initializes our variable, we have a statement that tests its value, and then we have a statement which modifies it. And if we want to take that and put it in a for loop, all we have to do is put all those three parts together. So I'm going to change my for loop to a while loop. I'm going to take this initialization statement and I'm going to put it in my loop. And then I'm going to take the mutating statement and I'm going to put it after my boolean condition. Now notice that I also have to delete that semicolon. Be careful that you don't do that. If you leave a semicolon in there, you'll get a syntax error, but it's just something you should avoid. So I've got my for loop now. Compile and run it. And our program runs the same. Again, every for loop is just a shortcut way of writing the equivalent while loop. Um, it just makes our code a little bit easier for people to read and understand. And we talked about some of the important things to know that a for loop runs a definite number of times and that you need to make sure that you include all three parts of your counting loop um, when you write its definition. Okay, you're all set.